thank you, agriinformation.com, and uh, my sincere wishes uh, to all of you. Uh, well, uh, viewers, uh, today uh, we take up the important topic book, a startup in agri or horticulture, uh, which will be from three to four, and we have a half an hour uh, presentation that will be followed by discussion. Well, uh, let me come to the point very straight away here. See, today, why startups are so important in horticulture? And then, as you already know, that the horticulture production has surpassed the agriculture production. Uh, now it's uh, somewhere standing around 350 million metric tons, and agri production is somewhere coming around 340 million metric tons. So then, how this uh, entire bumper production has come, and why startups are required in the agri sector and horti sector, and how it can ease on the farmers, how it can ease on the marketing process, how it can uh, increase the income among the farmers. See, for example, you have now been uh, hearing to our Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji about you know, nano urea, which has come. See, nano urea, instead of one bag of urea, which comes only with 250 ml, a small bottle of nano urea can uh, replace what uh, could have been done with one uh, 50 kilo or 100 kilo of urea bags. And as uh, Modi ji was saying, that means it has already brought empowerment in them and uh, it's going to reduce the transportation cost and it's also going to increase the production and so many other factors. So therefore, when I say startup, you have a bubble, you have a growth, you have an ideation, the incubation, the acceleration and the decline. I already uh, covered this in the other lectures as well. So the idea with all your hard work, when you launch it and put the growth, a startup is here to give solutions to the consumers, the stakeholders and so on. It is not definitely a me too product. See, suppose if you are you know, preparing some idlis and chutneys and selling it on the road, we don't call you startup. Suppose if I say IoT application in agriculture, for example, in IHR, we have got the Center of Protected Cultivation which totally works on the IoT principle, Internet of Things, and you can control the humidity, you can control the temperature. We have a soilless cultivation, vertical farming, okay? And virtually speaking, we don't require any land at all to produce all our horticulture crops. That is the technology which has come, and obviously, we are also targeting the off-season vegetables, off-season fruits. See, because in an urban and a peri-urban area, where a lot of dwellings are coming up for livelihoods, we require these sort of things. We can't say that, you know, capsicum comes only in the rubby season or the cold season. And, you know, peas, for example, the, the small mutter which you all uh, eat, it's actually a rubby season crop. So we can't say that I'll wait for the cold season so that today we have production, then we have freezing, we have deep freezing. And, you know, it should be made available. The products have to be made available throughout the year at a less cost. And obviously, the concept of uh, glut and the price rise. See, recently you experienced very high prices in tomatoes. So why all this happened? Because, you know, the present tomato, which should have come in the month of June, July, uh, the sowing should have occurred in the month of April. April, as you know, is a peak summer season and lot uh, the total net sown area of tomatoes was really less. And then uh, we could not get much... Uh, uh, invert the load from uh, Coimbatore and all that. And we had to depend entirely on Kolar and this uh, Malur farmers for our tomatoes. So uh, th there are some local reasons why this sort of high price rise. And suddenly, you know, there's also glut. See, okay, then when, when at this time you got a very high price, farmers are bound to again going for tomatoes and the crop zone area will be very high. And then in the uh, Kharif season, you experience some sort of glut. For example, in the summer season, the tomatoes, obviously, because of scarcity of water, the net zone area is less, but uh, the, the output is also less, and therefore, the prices are going to shoot. So somehow, when I do the resource smoothing here, what I wish is that a startup is going to give solutions for these sort of things. Obviously, at a consumer side, we want uniform prices, uniform rates, and also, you know, we want the availability throughout the year 24 by 7. So this is what the consumer, so therefore keeping the consumer demand on one side, the producer's uh, limitations on the other side, when I apply linear programming with the simplex model or the graphic method, I come with a sort of a resource smoothing and I'm going to say that we are here 
to do two things in the agri and hoti startup one is the input factorization part where you know the fpos uh, have been coming here they should get all the inputs at a very reasonable rate without uh, the middleman playing there and obviously when their outputs are coming it should not suffer glut or uh, of course over pricing and uh, high prices of the outputs farmers are benefited but uh, you know it also that unwanted things happened that people started stealing the tomatoes and then people had to give a police complaint so we are not interested in this as well so the startups will be giving solutions both for the producer side the stakeholder side and the iot of things the internet of things where we have the protected cultivation where off season vegetables fruits can be grown throughout the year and also the demand and supply equation which is going to determine the prices of horticulture or agriculture crops has to be smoothened that means just like when we did a amul milk grid you know we came out with the nddb model uh, that means now milk is available throughout the year the prices are also not going to be so volatile in nature even to make a 2 rupees rise recently the nandini milk uh, from karnataka had to face so much trouble and uh, now of course uh, we are paying 2 rupees extra so that is the whole idea of why a startup is going to come it's going to plan it's going to develop a strategy with so many actions analysis and then give the solutions see now there are so many <coughs> agriculture value chain startups <coughs> the figure is self explanatory either in the we are going to ease on the farming process or we are going to produce more crop per drop or we use the drone technology for spraying pesticides and then Uh, capturing data for example when i was a consultant for ifco uh, there's a krishi devgyan app you can also download it but of course you will require authentication from ifco so where the entire uh, cultivation process production process marketing process they are all based on the app they are all highly data driven experiments so now even coming to the increased efficiency in photosynthesis okay where we talk about the c3c4 plants so giving innovative products technologies and services to farmers and consumers this is what we are basically aiming at to reduce the post harvest losses and we want startups to come here you have the ninja cart you have the way cool many of my students are working there so all these people are trying to bridge the end to end supply chain that's what we say so when they are going to bridge the end to end supply chain okay people are going to get a lot of benefits so now very quickly going i've already shown you this figure startups are using technology to provide high quality products to retailers it may be input front or it can be an internet uh, or it can be an ict service giving it or it can be crop sensing monitoring with uh, you know precision agriculture drone technology okay then it can also be the cloud seeding and many things are going to come here so technology is there all around so this has to be given by a startup it is not a one man job startup is not a one man job although the promoter may be a single man but it is the innovative idea which takes place for example we had this uh, even in a microfinance sector see everybody cannot approach the bank so the microfinance has come in the name of sagra that uh, one of the persons is a postgraduate from uh, rajendra nagar he runs this microfinance scheme just with your aadhar card and a minimum kyc the your um, uh, loans are delivered at your doorstep and that's how it is going to take place so when it comes to startups on the indian agri sector we build efficiency to the produce the trade the trade protocols okay and cost of production to rule out competition so therefore just because there is a demand for tomatoes okay you cannot grow it under the protected cultivation or if you if everybody starts growing tomatoes in the subsequent season they will be glut so therefore these are all some of the things where we use market intelligence and then try to give this sort of data to both the producers the consumers and the resource moving part of it so now what are these agri tech startups what should they do they have to measure their business models with higher unit of economics that means they should definitely be doing a profit orientation not by increasing the prices by increasing the sales volume and getting a reasonable amount of customers so you have to reduce your cost and build your business model so it is stimulating rather than displacing conventional value chain 
see, I suppose, you know, we also use the concept of reverse value chain. See, suppose, you know, when an input marketing is taking place, let us say by IFCO. So when an input marketing already a supply chain network is there, why don't you use the same thing for a reverse output marketing as well? So since small and marginal farmer constitute about 86% of the population, the solution need to be inclusive. See, today there is nothing like that a startup is working only for the big farmer and not for the small and marginal farmer. See, you know the antithesis of the Green Revolution, which told that it helped only the big farmers and the many of the technologies were not on the economies of scale. So, but today it is not like that. A startup or a mobile uh, uh, yeah, IoT based uh, phone. So all these are giving a data driven, a realistic time approach. Okay, a yeah, measurable, smart and a uh, yeah, real time decision making has been taking place when the startups are in place. See, now I will give you some examples where uh, both in India and abroad, how some of these startups are working. For example, there's a startup, it's a UK based uh, startup, Sauce Bio, who uh, develops sustainable agrochemicals, something like our uh, nano urea coming from IFCO. So today, you know, many of the soil application things have become foliar application. So even in IHR, we've got a foliar application for mango. Okay, we have a, so many of the micronutrients are developed, uh, delivered through the foliar application. Then there's another company called Iriot where smart irrigation, uh, which is an IoT based one, is there the same thing is also tried in India with the giant irrigation system. I told you the center of protected cultivation at IHR also uses a similar IoT based model. So where even in the off season, we do the cultivation, there is no curry rabi summer. Those things are all very outdated uh, concepts, they've gone. And there's another uh, startup called as Forest IO, where uh, they use precision agriculture, just like our IFCO, Krishi Dev Gyan, uh, which is highly a data driven one. They even have a AWS, the automatic weather station. So it will predict when the humidity is more, because when humidity is more, uh, many of the fungal diseases are going to take place. So uh, recently we had an experiment at Koppel where 500 farmers, uh, we, I had used the biofortified Bajra HR 1000, which is from Harvest Plus. See, so normally in Bajra, you get about 40 ppm of iron, but uh, in the fortified Bajra, we get about 100 ppm of iron. So it is not only going to, uh, you know, give solution for the pregnant women, lactating mothers who are highly anemic. So these are all some of the low cost uh, solutions where not only at uh, plant breeding variety, but at the same time, you know, when I say uh, Gyan, Vigyan or Abhyan say, the science has to be taken through the agriculture extension system or a technology transfer system. We'll have to uh, put it in a program and then we'll have to put this. So there's also another uh, startup called as Babylonia, which is totally urban farming. Earlier, you know, when I was a young boy, we used to study about the truck farming in London and UK based. Similarly, IHR has come out with this vertical farming, soilless cultivation system with a wick system. Yeah. So that is already there. And uh, we have one more Dahlia Robotics. Uh, many of my students, they are working from mechatronics. There are the engineering students who are trying to put robotics into horticulture and the other things. They are trying to develop sensor-based application. See, for example, if it's a, a land, they will tell you what is the moisture, what is the field capacity. Suppose if it's a leaf uh, sensor, it's going to tell you whether the leaf is flaccid or uh, there's enough water in that and what sort of precautionary prophylactic measures you'll have to be taking. So now uh, French uh, recently also gave a national webinar on the same topic. Okay, and then... Um, uh, that's one of the book which I've written on farmers' empowerment and entrepreneurial development through FPOs and startups. I'm the first author. And that is the book. This costs you around 3,600 rupees. Uh, if you need, I can even share the free PDF copy for you for your benefit. So all the, all the things I've been speaking here, uh, yeah, you can give my team, huh? you can give my team here. So all the things which I've been uh, discussing here right at this stage is available in this book. You can always get back to me and we'll continue. So these are all. Uh, so earlier, you know, we have come out with a lot of innovative products. See, especially startups, many of our startups have taken this jackfruit seed powder, mushroom powder base. We have a Arca chocolate at IHR. Yeah. And then uh, we also have this mushroom powder. So many of these things are already done and a lot of our uh, startups. And see, today it is, when you say horticulture or agriculture, 
it is not only the food security it is again about the nutrition security and the nutrition security is devil is delivered to a startup they take a license uh, they have an idea for example they come to ihr we incubate them they we have acceleration and you know we also produce all the darka microbial consortia these are all the aregin or arecal organics and biofertilizers sold through our etic okay a lot of demand between the business planning uh, people so now ultimately when i say an fpo or a startup what i am actually trying to do is to build a social capital vis a vis a market has to be developed that's what i want we want startups to do see the production front we have empty number of people there are so many people who are producing the things but there are not many people who can take it through a supply chain and then you know distribute it in the market and make people aware of it see that is where the fig wig gun sick comes fig is nothing but the farmer interest group women interest group and the commodity interest group who are again cluster and they, they can also become startups okay and a startup can also service all these people taking consuming through the local markets and the urban markets and also reaching the global market this is what basically a startup is going to do he is going to build my market see today you know bangalore has been a hub of so many startups and uh, we have one startup who has become a unicorn which is again you know wait a patat erik ah yeah i'm sorry the, my screen went off okay yeah so what we are trying to do here at this stage is the startups are going to give some low cost solution see for example i'll tell you one of our uh, startup he has become a unicorn i'll i'll show you him here he is available here one minute so in this unicorn startup actually has developed a sensor based fruit fly detection system see now the fruit fly lays their eggs in the month of february when the flowers are just blooming especially fruit fly is a big problem in alfonso so now once when the fruits are alfonso come somewhere in the month of april and may first week once when the fruits are there see it cannot go to the export market because fruit fly docus dorsalis if it is there they it gets rejected so therefore this particular startup has developed a sensor along with ihr so you pass the alfonso mangoes on the conveyor belt and the light intensity distinguishes and all the fruit fly affected mangoes are going to come out so therefore we talk about an inclusive value chain that means a technology enablement and partnership with other sectors for inclusive market oriented development we call it as imod see now i gave you the example of mango so why do we need a startup there <clears throat> it is not that in palace grounds the fellow dumps all the mangoes and you bring all the alfonso and then finally they are all fruit fly affected so now once when this particular sensor developed system is going to be used for screening the mangoes you can deliver a definitely a high value mango okay to the people so therefore <clears throat> using ict for extension we're putting e contracts and demand forecasting okay this is on the technology ecosystem front and then obviously on the marketing front we got to do the processing and branding a supply chain management and obviously a mooc sort of a system okay a parts battery online massive uh, courses are there so this is how both the rural youth and the urban consumer and the farmer we are going to improve their awareness levels see today you know you cannot do marketing with ignorance of course uh, ignorance may be a bliss or it is a bless i don't know about that but people were using ignorance to sell a low quality product see today it is all a very high value high quality product and with high awareness you have to sell that means no longer you can do any cheating okay and you know our consumers are also highly aware that's what i talk about when i say inclusive value chain startup integration is the current situation is integrated that's why a funnel is shown here in the figure you bring the change the innovation and the intervention and we reach a desired situation see today you go to a supermarket see no kachada nothing everything is neatly you know packed graded okay the price tags are there the rfid tags are in place when it was packed see you can put a wrong date on a 
packet, but you cannot put uh, cheat the RFID. It will say that this particular pickle or this particular product was uh, processed in so and so address on so and so date, and that is the batch number. So that much of awareness just by the click of this uh, infrared gun, which everybody is having, a QR code is there, the RFID tags are in place, so people can find out, and that's what the startups have been doing. See, you imagine if I can simply uh, put a QR code and I use your RFID tag to find out from where the, uh, you know, the rotten materials or the substandard materials have come, I as a businessman or as a supermarket owner can easily find out and I can simply delete that particular supplier. See, suppose earlier days, it, it, it was not known. Say, so, okay, the bad mangoes and the good mangoes were all together in a lot and I did not know how to use an RFID tag. So that's how the startup integration has come. So there are umpteen number of uh, startups, both in Agri. I think, you know, your go digit insurance and then there are so many in Agri as well. Uh, who are trying to become the unicorns. You can see the photo of this uh, horse, you know, when it uh, surpasses. So we also have a lot of uh, startup business programs, both at our uh, best start. And even I conducted one of the winter schools here last year. So look at this particular model. I wish to spend some time here. A startup basically comes out with an innovation to use the technology and obviously keeping all the intellectual property rights, regulatory rhythms, they form a company, it's a company by the Companies Act and market linkage and other support, they do it and they do the agri business. So here, you know, the Kotler's 4P model does not work here. See, Kotler told the product price plays and the promotion strategy, but basically a startup is going to work out on a low cost solution with a very high sales volume to achieve the break-even point and recover the fixed cost. So that is going to be the mantra of the startup. So we do such programs. And then, you know, you can see the startup India. Why India? Because we stand third in the entire world, okay, in the startup ecosystem. Okay, in 2018 itself, we had 1,200. And now today, we are uh, surpassing even 10,000. So uh, in US, okay, uh, all our... Uh, you can see the we, we are not less than them. And then top uh, firms in India are all foreign. Okay, especially the VC firms, the value chain firms. They're all coming from India. Whether, you know, the Google CEO is our man. And then the Microsoft person is our man. So many startups. See, one of my cousin brothers, that fellow was a PhD in, uh, a PhD in uh, nanoscience. Okay, he was in the uh, electronics and nanoscience guy. He's a PhD from Purdue. And that fellow was an associate professor in Rice University. Today, that fellow resigned. He's now starting up a small startup, you know, especially for the sensor-based uh, nanosystems. Uh, he has his company at Pina. So that's how, you know, once when the startup capital is in Bangalore and Delhi and so on, people are also venturing. The people no longer depend only on those cozy and uh, pushy jobs of lakhs and things like that. So it's not just earning money, but reaching a larger audience and, uh, you know, painting your success stories on a larger canvas. I think that is what the startup mantra is going to be. Continuing further, in converting an opportunity into profit is called the startup. See, now, yesterday I was taking a class on plant breeding, you know, especially participatory plant breeding. This is where extension comes into plant breeding. Traditionally, the breeders have been collecting seeds and all that, but when I talk about participatory plant breeding, which is going to become a startup, we extension workers are going to mobilize the 6,40,000 villages in India with all the villages and you know already they have some local knowledge, they're already preserving their seeds. So we are going to make what is called as a national participatory seed grid. So now, you know, we have the NBPGR, the National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources, which of course does to a small extent on the in situ and the ex situ conservation of plants. But that's not enough for a big country like India. And that too with a very rich diversity. Today, we want many of our plant varieties to be not just nutrient sensitive, but they should be climate sensitive. In order to achieve this, to go and promote the natural farming or organic farming. See, there are so many varieties Okay, there are so many varieties. 
ಎಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋಗುತ್ತಪ್ಪ ಇದು ಏನಾಯ್ತು ಇದು ಸ್ಕ್ರೀನ್ ನೋಡ್ರಿ ನಿಮಿಷ ಸಡನ್ ಸಡನ್ ಯಾ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ವೆರೈಟೀಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ದೇರ್ಸ್ ಅದ ಮಂಜು ದಿಸ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರೀನ್ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಒನ್ ಮಿನಿಟ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಅ ಮಿನಿಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಯು ಯಾ ಸೊ ಕನ್ವರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಯಾ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಐ ಶುಡ್ ಕೀಪ್ ದಿ ಮೌಸ್ ಆನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಸೊ ನೌ ಸೊ ಒನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಬಿಲಿಯನ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ರಿಲೈನ್ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ರಿಸೋರ್ಸಸ್ ಐ ಟೋಲ್ ಯು ಅಬೌಟ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಬ್ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಪಾರ್ಸಿಪೇಟಿವ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಬ್ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಫಾರ್ಮರ್ಸ್ ಕೆನ್ ಕೀಪ್ ದರ್ ಓನ್ ಸೀಡ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಸೀಡ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಅಪ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ದೆನ್ ದೇ ಯೂಸ್ ದ ಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಆನ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಟು ಜನರೇಟ್ ಫುಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕ್ಯಾಶ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಡಿ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡೂ ಇಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಅಟ್ ದಿ ಸೇಮ್ ಟೈಮ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಯು ನೋ ಮೇಕ್ ಇಟ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಸಸ್ಟೈನಬಲ್ ಲೈವ್ಲಿಹುಡ್ ಅಟ್ ದಿ ರೂರಲ್ ಏರಿಯಾಸ್ ಸೊ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ರೀಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಹಾರ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಗೋಂಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ದಿ ಅಪ್ರೋಚ್ ಇವನ್ ಬೀಕೀಪಿಂಗ್ ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಯು ನೋ ದಿ ಅಭಿಯಾನ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಬೀನ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೇಟ್ರಿ ಇನ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಅಪ್ಸ್ ಟು ಪ್ರಮೋಟ್ ಬೀ ಕೀಪಿಂಗ್ ವಿಚ್ ನಾಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ಕ್ರೀಸ್ ದಿ ಪಾಲಿನೇಷನ್ ಪ್ರಾಸೆಸ್ ಬಟ್ ದಿ ಅದರ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಅಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಸೊ ನೌ ಇನ್ ಅ ಅಗ್ರಿ ಬಿಸ್ನೆಸ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಚೈನ್ ಲುಕ್ ಅಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಚೈನ್ ಮ್ಯಾಪ್ ವೇರ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಅಪ್ಸ್ ಕೆನ್ ಕಮ್ ಸೊ ಐದರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಇನ್ಪುಟ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಹಾರ್ವೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಗ್ರೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ಸೊ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಪ್ಯಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಫರ್ಮೇಷನ್ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ಓಕೆ ಟ್ರೇಡ್ ಕನ್ಸಂಪ್ಷನ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಅಪ್ಸ್ ಕೆನ್ ಡೆಫಿನೆಟ್ಲಿ ಕಮ್ ಸೊ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಅಟ್ ದಿ ಮೈಕ್ರೋ ಮೀಸೋ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಮೈಕ್ರೋ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಸೊ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ದರ್ ಬಿಸ್ನೆಸ್ ವಾಲ್ಯೂಮ್ ಆನ್ ದರ್ ಇನ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಇನ್ಪುಟ್ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡರ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಫಾರ್ಮರ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಯಾಕರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಟ್ರೇಡರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಹೌ ಐ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಇ ಗೇವ್ ಎನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಕನ್ಸ್ಯೂಮರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪೈನಾಪಲ್ ಜ್ಯೂಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಮಾರ್ಕೆಟ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಚೈನ್ ಮೇಪ್ ಸೊ ಹೌ ದೇ ಕೆನ್ ಕನ್ವರ್ಟ್ ಎ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಆಪರ್ಚುನಿಟಿ ಇನ್ ಟು ಎ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಅಪ್ ಸಿ ಟುಡೇ ಇಂಟಲೆಕ್ಚುಯಾ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅ ಲಿಮಿಟೇಷನ್ ಫಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ನಾಟ್ ಅ ಲಿಮಿಟೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಜೆಂಟಲ್ಮೆನ್ ವಿತ್ ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೈವರ್ಸ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಬೀನ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಜಾಬ್ ಐ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಗಿವ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಯರ್ ಸೊ ದಿ ಫಾದರ್ ಸ್ಟೀವ್ ಬ್ಲಾಂಕ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ ದಿ ಫಾದರ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಅಪ್ ಸೊ ಇ ಹಸ್ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಅ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ಯುಯಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಐ ಯು ಕೆನ್ ಶೇರ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೊ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಅಪ್ ಪ್ರಪರ್ಸ್ ಟು ಯಂಗ್ ಕಂಪ್ನಿ ವಾಲ್ ದಿ ಟೋಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ದ ಇನೋವೇಟಿವ್ ಐಡಿಯಾ ಇಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಸೊ ನಾವು ಇನ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನಿ ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸರ್ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸೇಷನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗೆಟಿಂಗ್ ರೆಮ್ಯುನರೇಟಿವ್ ಪ್ರೈಸಸ್ ಲಾರ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಟರ್ಮಿಡಿಯೇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಆರ್ ದೇರ್ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ದೇರ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಬೇಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಪೂರ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರೆಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಸಿಚುಯೇಷನ್ ವೇರ್ ಎ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಅಪ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಕಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ನೋ ಸಾಲ್ವ್ ದೀಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಅಪ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಸಾಲ್ವಿಂಗ್ ಯುವರ್ ಪ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಅಪ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸಾಲ್ವಿಂಗ್ ಯುವರ್ ಎಂಪ್ಲಾಯ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಾಲ್ವಿಂಗ್ ಯುವರ್ ಫಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಓಕೆ ಇಟ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಅ ಪಿಚ್ ಫಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಏಂಜಲ್ ಇನ್ವೆಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅ ಬೂಟ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಾಪರ್ ಆರ್ ಅ ಕ್ರೌಡ್ ಫಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಯು ಗೆಟ್ ಫಂಡ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಟುಡೇ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಅವೈಲಬಲ್ ದ ಎಕೋ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಇಸ್
See why everybody goes only to mango juice? Why not this pale juice? See here, Peronia elephanta. So like that, you should come on even kamalam fruit, the dragon fruit juice. We are trying to prepare and market. Not only preparing a fruit, but why don't you bio fortify this as well? When you bio fortify, the value is going to increase. It is going to uh, solve many of your nutrition and vitamin problems. Pricing is another issue. Either they are too overpriced because. Uh, they they are not able to achieve the sales volume, and then the poor product. Uh, you know, normally everybody gives that a juice is you know valid for six months. Of course, without preservative, no um, sodium benzoate and uh, all those things are potassium uh, bichlorate. So without the preservatives, you should be able to do. It's a poor product, and there is no business model at all. See either the B to B, B to C, or C to C, or network marketing. People are very good at producing. See, even today I find people on the road selling onions, three kilos, hundred rupees. I saw in the morning. I said that means that no, no. I am not blaming the farmer or a startup. That means that fellow does not know how to integrate a, a market with him. He does not have a buyback. He does not have a pre-hedging contract. So that's the reason uh, they have failed. That's all. Otherwise, you know, simply shouting on the road, hundred rupees, three kilos. So this is the Indian startup scenario. Uh, of course, Karnataka, Telangana, Maharashtra, Gujarat, Uttar Pradesh, Haryana doing a very good job. Tamil Nadu also, whereas the other ones not so much because of the ecosystem and the government uh, involved there. Uh, they are not getting much promotion there, and especially in Bihar, uh, Chhattisgarh, all Naxal affected, and Manipur violence in the northeast, Rajasthan. Not only the desert. So the Indian startup scenario tells me two stories. It is the ecosystem which is responsible for the promotion. It is not just the geographical area. For your kind information, I want to share that. Okay, I want to share. I don't know why my screen is put. My screen is going off. One minute here. What is the problem? Yes, sir. Yeah, I just said so. No, no. Why my screen goes? I think screen saver some issue. Okay, I'll do it. Okay, it will be going off. You don't worry. I'll do it. Okay. So what I'm telling to say is, the fail to take up building. I told you, no, no, wrong product. No, there's some issue in. I'll uh, hint another loose contact here. Yeah? Okay, okay. Leave it. Leave it. Don't, don't do anything. Don't do. Class is done. So not able to build the right team. Lack of unique uh, value proposition. Lack of persistence. Okay, no mentors or advisors. See, I'm not telling that these are all bookish things. We did document in also this particular book which I wrote. See, now a startup is based on money or it is based on an idea. Definitely, all you will say is only one answer. It is based on an innovation and an idea. Your innovation and you don't have any idea at all. You are only selling at least, but you want to call your yourself as a startup. Where is the innovative idea there? Where is the innovative model? See, for example, if you take the mobile phones, I told you one of my cousin brothers who is working on the thing. He is, you know, some loose contact man. No delay. Just a minute, my. Change down, please. Yes, madam. Keyboard, keyboard, okay. Yeah, yeah. The keyboard is the problem. Okay. Yeah, I think I will. Uh, the keyboard, there was some issue here. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So what I wish to say is, okay, now they are working out with developing a chargeable Nikon nickel ion battery, which will stay at least for one week. So whether can we develop such batteries in the mobile phones which are self-charging? No need to see. Many times when you go outside, you are carrying a power bank which is very obnoxious, and you are not able to do anything out of it. How uh, the phone is only lightweight, but the bloody power bank is very heavyweight. So we are looking at something to do. This. These are some of the innovative ideas. Obviously, business plan. There is no capex and opex issues at all. They are very high. Everybody tries to buy a land. No, you should take everything on rent, and you know you should try to sell the idea as much as possible and not sell the any other thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think. Yeah. What has happened? One minute. Yes. One minute. He is preparing. Okay, fine. So 
this is how we already do it, friends. Uh, I told you about the capex and opex issues also just now. So now in a, I told you the concept stage, startup growth and expansion stage. I told you we also call it as the ideation, incubation, acceleration, diversification, and growth. So at these stages, we want to where you have to put the capital. See now you are in an acceleration stage and you want to take the agri wood on, or you want to go to the next level. You require funds. See when you are now at the uh, initial incubation and ideation stage, you require a lot of ideas. So you should know when to put the idea, when to put the capital, when to diversify, when to exit. See, just like there's a hello, uh, sir. We lost your audio, sir. Hello, sir. Are you connected? So you can hear us. Hello, are you able to hear now? Yes, sir. Please unmute your mic now. Yeah, yeah, because the, suddenly the yeah, Zoom you list... Okay, now this is fine. Oh, okay. okay, fine. So now I told you about the hydroponic retail store business. Okay, we have this garlic farming, which is coming as a... Not only for eating, I you know there are so many other applications of this medicinal and other things. Okay, then we have lavender farming, which is again coming up from the production side. I'm trying to discuss some startups which are coming from the production side, the retail side, the output side, and the marketing stage and other things. Then we also have this garment and mushroom farming coming up. Bamboo farming is another important area where it's picking up in the startup. Willow farming, of course. Then creating wealth from agriculture. Where this is a book from the Indian Council of Agriculture Research where many of the waste can be converted into wealth. And this is where the startup opportunities are there. I'll be also sharing you this book with uh, agreeinformation.com. You can take it. Preparation of handmade paper from jute waste. People had not thought, but we are now successful in our Krijav Central Research Institute for jute and allied fibers, which is at Kolkata. So we, have, we are also producing lac dye from effluent of stick lac washing. Okay, many residues, we are going to use it. So lac mud as organic manure because it has a lot of insect and the lack insect, it can be used as an organic manure. We want some startup to take up this and already it's been commercialized, it's ready. So you can take up and convert into a business opportunity. Fortified rice analogs from broken rice and dal. Okay, uh, it is very rich in nutrients and you can even add certain nutrients for this. And then, you know, it can avoid your malnutrition problem, quashiarker, marasmus or whatever. Then protein isolates from de oil cakes using novel process. See, for example, the soya bean, the ground nut. Okay, there are so many concentrates from the de oil cakes. Uh, this is not yet commercialized. It is coming from the National Research Center at Junagad on ground nut. So somebody can pick up this and then, you know, you can uh, make a very high protein, you know. Our DFRL works on this particular thing. The Defense Food Research Labs, which produces high protein concentrates for our soldiers. And uh, even you can use it in our uh, child food and uh, chocolates and all that. Soilless planting media using sugar residue industries. See, you know about the cocoa peat farming and the arca fermented uh, cocoa peat. We can also use uh, many soilless planting media. Sugar industry has got a lot of residues like molasses and so on and so forth. We can put 25% coir pit and dry cow dung and then, you know, we can neutralize the acidity by further enriching with neem cake and biocontrol agents. And this is going to be a beautiful uh, fertilizer uh, at a very low cost. Bioreactor with microbial consortium to recycle food waste using rapid composting. You see a lot of food waste are generated from the hotels, uh, the hostels and so on. So instead of you know, uh, throwing them here and there and soiling the uh, place, you can use a bioreactor and recycle this food waste and you can convert into a beautiful compost. See, even such things have been coming even in the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan and many things. 
so not many people are coming and uh, slowly you know i see some two three startups they were engineers who have taken up this see wherever all the waste products are dumped so they will come and pick it up they will segregate the waste and convert into a beautiful compost see for example um, family net vessel compost technology for recycling kitchen waste see especially in uh, inland, inland fish farming and all that all the earthworm species so many of these things okay we call it as a family net vessel and uh, bio composting technology using uh, uh, a small uh, carrier 3 into 2 into 1 meter and then you can ferment it and then you can also you see there are two types of fermentation one is the aerobic fermentation the other one is the anaerobic fermentation see many times all this uh, poultry waste has to be done anaerobic fermentation if you do aerobic fermentation it will burn your uh, roots and all that we should be very careful which composting takes the uh, aerobic fermentation which one will take the anaerobic fermentation tamarind seed husk which reduces enteric methane emission also can be used so there is a patent with icr okay it has tannins and very effective in the modulation of rumen fermentation see especially you know all these things are very important oil palm factory waste for mushroom production okay you can use them animal feed from potato waste okay excellent potato feed enriched also paper plate from natural fiber biomass you see many of these plates already in the market circot has developed a technology uh, production for the disposal paper plate from banana pseudo stem and sugarcane bagasse you know very important you can use them coconut waste compost a soilless medium Okay, this is under good area where the startups have come in. The agri and hoti. See now, you know this pachauli oil uh, is a very aromatic oil, and then once you distill it and uh, extract the essential oil, okay, you still have some distilled waste, spent char, we say, which can be used in the manufacture of agarbatti. Very important uh, things. Extraction of virgin pomegranate seed oil, very rich in vitamins. Okay. and then uh, you can also say uh, pomegranate seed oil rich in linolenic acid so many such things can become startups and already the commercialization has been done by icr license has been given they come to the business planning development unit they incubate here we give a license a very nominal license fee organic manure from fish waste is another important area aquaponic system for production of plant biomass see look at this without soil okay you can use the pro trace and develop all this plant by amount and you can make a small nursery for yourself so okay friends kya hua what up one minute one minute yeah, yeah. one i am i am Yeah, uh, these are the state-wise data of how the startups, the FPOs, have been taking place. Okay, and then uh, these are all the transition to coordinated surplus farmer. So there's a small book called as Energizing Infants Farmer Producer Organization. We told you about the production. So wherever you go, adding commercial value, bringing, converting the opportunity threat analysis, you should have a business planning. market plan and a financial plan until and otherwise you do this a startups are not going to take place simply an idea itself cannot become a startup see when someone has to work hard they should put the dpr in place that they, okay detailed project report that business plan marketing plan and so on okay so we have already discussed this what happens in the incubation stage and the other one at the maturity stage where the business expansion has to take place people are very good at the pilot scale they will start selling a, a pickle just for 40 rupees or 30 rupees but when you upscale it the other problems of supply chain and value chain and the network problems are going to come you are not going to be able to handle all these things so every fpo and startup will have an agri business promotion unit which is actually going to do a research and find out how much of fund has to be put which which technology has to be brought in so whether the technologies can reduce the cost of production or it's an innovative product all those things is going to be taken care by the agri business and promotion units and then uh, linking and syncing with the actors in the supply chain and value chain and having a marketing network okay
that is where the crucial role plays for the startup startups are very good i told you at the pilot scale but when you take it to the next scale i see many of my incubators in the 80 year who are struggling to take to the next level to the sales okay so credit linkages it is after the abpu before the abpu so you should also have uh, linkages with credit the state grants and all that and you know today any startup is given minimum 5 crore rupees especially the agri infrastructure fund 3% interest so tap these opportunities if you don't know how to tap the opportunities you're not there so therefore a business plan so technology credit access market linkage and schemes and obviously this gst filing with the 12th of every month you'll have to do all these things and that is how you take your business forward especially gap certification good agri good agriculture practice certification is a must so okay then you can take decisions and do all that market linkages we already discussed enough so okay you see some of the fpos and startups which are linked see here upl okay leave way cool these are all startups mother dairy big basket okay sufal ina all are linked here even ifco i told you i was a consultant for ifco even now i work there so output linkages after the agri business plan unit that it should increase many times it has increased this the study which is told and they definitely a startup can have many small small outlets which is outsourced to an fpo you sell both input and also procure their output and this is how the output uh, procurement chain is going to be established and uh, many companies like ifco and all have already done it i told you it's called the reverse uh, supply chain so when you have already got an input supply chain the forward chain you can also have a reverse supply chain and procure the inputs and also do the output marketing so both in terms of input factorization and output commercialization we have been doing it so dan lakshmi how much time do i have i have under 10 minutes Uh, not... sir i i would like to take up the questions also sir we have completed 47 minutes okay if fine we can finish in 10 minutes i'll take up question okay no problem i'm finishing in one more slide okay so we'll 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 quickly go to the so all these things are there i'll just come to the the other one okay one minute yeah this is the last slide so friends uh, to again begin with i again reiterate and again confirm what i told in the beginning a startup runs with an innovative idea number one number two it works on the sales volume it does not work on increasing the cost third is it tries to give solution either through iot or through ict or through a market linkage or through a financial things and so on and so forth without giving a solution a startup cannot exist so startup to conclude startups and only an entrepreneur there's a lot of difference between startup and entrepreneur entrepreneur is the one who takes risk startup is the one who uses an innovative idea to grow not only for himself but also serve the stakeholders at large so thank you very much i'm going to end this slide show and we open for question thank you sir uh, thank you very much sir for an wonderful presentation i will take up the questions from the participants now uh, yeah I'm ready, ma'am. Yes, sir. How can startups in this sector ensure fair and ethical labor practices in their operations, especially when dealing with labor-intensive farming activities? See, now I wish to tell you that actually, except some one or two enterprises, more most of the startups are all technology-intensive farming. see they do not employ that much of laborers until it is a skill labor see until it is you know some parts battery plant breeding you are a seed production unit you employ see and fairly enough just a minute i got a call hello ah yeli sir yaar idu nane idinalla nane il paatha maartta idini adu kalasi no nimsha bandi bandi venkatesh loke bartta idanu nimsha so i think that you know not see labors also they are fairly taking but see we i am telling you it is today it's all uh, you know manpower contractors are there 
So I don't think that a startup will uh, employ directly and end up paying their pensions and uh, their gratuity and all that. They hire from a outsourced company who is again in turn going to take care of all these labor laws. Otherwise, I don't advise any startup to hire on their own and end up only with labor problems and forget the startup idea. Okay. What are the typical funding sources and investment opportunities available for horticulture and agriculture startups and what criteria do investors look for? Yeah, see now, see for example, the government of India has come out with the AIF, Agri Infrastructure Fund, where a minimum five crores is given with 3% interest. And apart from that, there are so many angel investors. Apart from that, uh, you know, you have even bootstrappers, people come with their own funds. Not much of fund is required. The innovative idea is required. See, now, if I want to develop off-season capsicum, three crops are very important in horticulture, where a lot of demand is there in the cities. One is broccoli, the other one is English cucumber, and the third is capsicum. So, if you have to develop this, even with a very modest investment of two to three lakhs, with a small protected house, you can do. You don't require much fund, but developing an English cucumber, broccoli, or capsicum, it requires a lot of uh, ideas. It requires uh, vertical farming. It requires uh, cocoa peat farming. It requires silage cultivation. It requires how the nutrient mixture is made or how the wick system works. So these are all technologically intensive, and definitely many of our horticulture technologies are not so much money intensive because. After some time, you can upscale it to level two, level three by putting more funds. But the basic idea in the very first level will not require much fund, but it requires a sound knowledge of horticulture technology and science. Okay. How can horticulture and agriculture startups collaborate with the traditional farmers? Practice, farming practices to create uh, synergies and foster growth? Very beautiful question you asked, madam. I should thank you first. See, first thing is, see, one of my friends in, uh, just in Gori Bitnur, he is a 100% exporter of gherkins, okay, or the English cucumbers, whatever you want to call. So now, this person is having only two or three acres for himself. The entire Manchenali village and Gori Bitnur Taluk, he has got about 100 villages, through whom he is developing these gherkins. And they, that is actually called as participatory plant breeding, or you can call it as participatory production. He is using the farmers to produce very high value vegetables, English cucumbers, exported. So this person takes care of organizing the farmers, giving them input credit and harvesting. And uh, the entire marketing is taken care of this fellow. Some incentives are given, packing, grading, branding, everything he does it. So this is how startups are playing role to aggregate these small and marginal farmers and then link them up and put them up in the startup value chain and supply chain. Okay. I move on to the next question, sir. How can uh, horticulture and agriculture startups engage with local communities and promote rural development through their activities? Again, the same thing. See, now... Suppose I am working, let us say, in Dodbalapur Taluk or Dodbalapur district. See, definitely I am not going to bring my laborers from Kerala or uh, Andhra Pradesh. So I will be using a lot of local resources through the PRA network, the participatory approach, the local institution, the agriculture universities, Krishi Vigyan Kendra and also IAHR. And I see that the law of the land and the law of the local is taken care. If I don't provide employment to the local people, then I am no good startup in agri or horticulture. See, now, unlike these engineering startups, see why they came to Bangalore? Because a lot of local engineers are available. So therefore, they established this engineering and uh, a computer science startup in Bangalore. Similarly, wherever I do the agri artist startup, whether it is English cucumber, or it is Alfonso mango, Kesar mango in Koppal, I am going to definitely use the local people. But now I am going to add some knowledge, skill, and attitude for them and also develop them as mini entrepreneurs who are uh, later on, they may also become startups. This, this sort of a model is working. 
Okay. What are the key challenges that startups in horticulture and agriculture typically face and how can they overcome them? The typical challenge in agri or hearty startups are, one thing is these are perishable products. Second thing is, okay, there is a lot of variation in the prices. Either you have a glut situation or you have a overshooted price like tomatoes, which happened recently. And third thing is the labor force is not an organized force in agriculture and horticulture. So if you solve these three problems, and if you have an innovative idea to convert all these products into high value products, you have made the show. Thank you. Okay. Uh, what are some key considerations for uh, scaling horticulture and agriculture startup for a small operation to a large, more impactful one? Ah, this is a, not only a challenging question, but we should also work on this. I have only half the answer, but I'll tell you. See, now, where are my customers for agri and hearty produce? They are all in cities. So, obviously, the major cities like Bangalore, Chennai, all whatever big, big metros are your targets. Okay, there you have enormous competition already. So, definitely, your marketing area is not the villages. Village is only your sourcing area. You have to produce in villages and market here. So, in the cities, you should be able to have a very good marketing channel and network. And in the villages where it is produced, you should see that some cold chain or something is going to bring the produce from there to the city. For example, Koppal, we, in and around Koppal, we have a lot of Kesar Alfonso. So how to bring that uh, Kesar Alfonso from there to Bangalore? Kesar Alfonso is sold at 300 rupees a kilo in Bangalore. Okay, it sells only at 100 rupees a kilo in Koppal. So that means 200 rupees of value addition if you have to do you will have to establish the supply chain, this network, some cold chain, take a warehouse or some small place in Bangalore, pay the rent, and then start the business model. This is how it should be done. Okay. You want to the next one, sir? Uh, can you share some uh, success stories of agriculture or horticulture startup that have made a significant impact in the industry? Yes, see, for example, I told you Way Cool is a startup. Okay, then uh, Sagraha is a microfinance is a startup. Okay, the, I can go on giving examples after examples. See, what Way Cool or uh, anything where my students are working is, they, they do the procurement in a cluster of villages, and I also give them input credit, get the production done, and afterwards, the entire marketing through the uh, warehouses, through the uh, mini markets are all done like that. See, for example, even Amazon Foods, so where my student Anjali Sati is one of the CEOs there, she works in Bangalore. That's what that girl does. So she has already outsourced all the production in many villages. People are going here and there and getting the production. She does only the marketing, packing, especially through Amazon Foods, which is a very popular thing in the app. You can also see Big Basket is doing the same thing. Okay, and then uh, we have so many other small, small uh, um, way to home. Big basket is one important thing. So the, all these are our all aggregator startups who invest more on the ICT part and doing the marketing part, but the um, uh, products come from the village only. So to do this also, it's a Herculean task. Okay, thank you very much, sir. We have now completed the round of questions on behalf of agricultureinformation.com. We'd like to thank uh, Dr. V.K. J. Raghavendra Rao for the talk and for answering the question. We'd like to also thank all the participants in this meeting. This meeting will now be closed. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We'll meet you second time. I'm leaving the meeting. Thank you. Yes, sir. You're welcome.